Well, hey there. It's been a while. Well, I've been working a job and for about three weeks now. And the nature of the job, basically it's just not a good idea to be recording out there. Um, I'm sure you're aware of what copper is worth. And this particular job, because it's for a radio station, there's copper everywhere. A lot of money. Now, I do have some pictures. Now, what you're seeing here is uh, the, the old building and the stuff we stripped out of it. And then uh, you're seeing a little bit of some of the inside uh, wiring of the new office. And you're seeing the satellite dish we put on the roof. It's a 12 and a half foot dish we put on top of a 22 foot uh, tall pole. Um, but uh, no pictures of the transmitter side. I just don't feel that that would be the right thing to show. I was also asked to go out and install a uh, radio and mount on the roof of a local business. And this provides a link between uh, their different branches. And I was able to do that by myself. Uh, there were supposed to be some help, but instead I climbed up there and installed it all by myself and got it in there. And pretty impressive, the silly thing doesn't leak, you know. I hate drilling holes in a roof and doing all that, but uh, went a little crazy with some sealant and got it in there. It's watertight, and then the customer asked me to paint the pole and paint it all black so it blends in a little bit. But uh, today we are at the house. I need to do a little mowing, knock down some tall grass. And uh, Dad came over, we seafoamed Mom's van. And uh, I don't know what else. I don't know what else I'm gonna get into today. I'm not really worried about getting much of anything done. I've been working 12 to 14 hour days for three weeks straight, so um, it's kind of nice just to be able to take things at my own pace today. But uh, we're gonna get some stuff done, so uh, stay tuned. Right on the highway, looking for adventure. That's got most of the tall stuff knocked down. I, um, I'm not gonna worry about all this up here right now because it's not very tall and it's really wet, so all it's gonna do is just clog up. Um, surprisingly, that wasn't as wet down there. You would think being lower spot in the yard, it would be really wet, but not so much so. Um, Dad smoked the yard out for us and got rid of all the bugs for a few minutes. For those of you that are haters against the sea foam, it does work. A lot of people tell me that the sea foam is just snake oil, and uh, I really don't agree. For one thing, yes, you can do the exact same thing just by pouring water in and, and, and sucking water through the vacuum line, and it'll do the exact same thing and work the same way, except sea foam is flammable. So uh, you're far less likely to hydro lock the motor as you are with water. Um, I've also done it with ATF, and ATF works the same way. You can suck ATF through the uh, vacuum line if you don't have anything else. It'll smoke like a house on fire for a long time, but it will clean out um, some of the deposits on top in the motor and make things run a little better. Um, but it does help, and I have seen uh, Seafoam make a car run that wasn't wasn't running before. Uh, it ran, but it just it wouldn't do anything more than the idle. Um, and uh, we ran sea foam through it. Um, it had no oil pressure. We put sea foam in the oil and let it sit and idle with sea foam in the oil and uh, drain the oil out after about 30 minutes and filled it back up. And lo and behold, the thing had oil pressure. And that vehicle has been on the road for about five years now. So uh, it's pretty hard to knock a product when you actually see it work. Um, but go ahead, and you haters can put on here that. Uh, Sea foam is snake oil and smoke in mirrors and doesn't do anything, but I disagree. Um, and I do run it on some of these trips that I go on for work when, I, when I'm on a trip for a long time. You know, if I'm on a B3 or 400 miles, uh, possibly run a tank of gas, I'll go fill it up with the highest grade gas I can find in the area, and then I'll throw some sea foam on top of it. And it uh, does seem to help long term. And uh, the old girl's got 322,000 miles, so... Uh, must be doing something for me to some degree uh, but here we are and uh, 
have a uh, yo a little beep, 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 I have a mowed yard, and partially anyway. And uh, I'm I don't know I'm gonna get the mower cleaned up. I may uh, load up and, and go mow somebody else's yard. Um, and we'll see what the kids are up to and what they want to do. Cause I've been working so much I haven't really had much time to spend with them. But uh, that is that, and uh, no other really big plans to do today. Maybe I need to trade places. I'll be a dog and lay around and sleep all day while they go to work. Sounds like a good idea. See what a few minutes of effort will get you? Yeah, I know a lot of people don't worry about that kind of stuff with their mowers. But keeping the mower deck clear is pretty important to me. Uh, craftsmen, particularly several years ago, had a model that the deck was prone to catching on fire uh, between the grass building up on the deck and the grass building up in front of the muffler. Um, and it was prone to catching on fire. We actually bought one that had already been caught on fire and restored it uh, back to like new. And we just always made sure to keep it really clean. But uh, that's something that's always been rather important to me is keeping your mower clean. Uh, it's kind of a safety concern. Uh, there's a lot of moving parts and um, yeah I realize some of you are going to say hey that's just like cleaning your motor every time you drive your car but not quite because you're not throwing the amount of dust and dirt and flammable items inside your car that you are with this. Uh, once that grass dries out in that deck it's it's pretty flammable so keep it clean. Well, I guess I'll sneak in a honeydew. Got to haul off all that trash. But I just tried something interesting. This truck has always been very prone to whipping and snapping the rear end around on demand in the mud. And I got down the side of that hill where it was kind of wet, a little bit slick. And I goosed it and turned the wheel and all I did was tear up some ground. Um, I'm getting a whole bunch of clanking and banging from the rear end so I'm pretty sure rear end in this truck has had it uh, you know it is what it is 10 bolts aren't known to be the best rear ends and this truck is way overweight and has been for a long time uh, in fact this truck is sitting on one ton leaves and it's squatting uh, just based on all the tools and stuff that stay in here all the time so I can't really complain um, so I guess I'll be calling around to some salvage yards and uh, trying to track down a 10 bolt 373 positive rear end middle fit of Suburban but it would be really cool to find a 410 14 bolt posi middle fit of Suburban um, but the likelihood of that happening is pretty slim unless I want to change it to an 8 lug and I don't want to do that I don't want an 8 lug in the back and a 6 lug in the front it just looks like crap but it would be nice 410 in the rear and 410 in the front end and man this thing would be a beast stump pulling beast that's not gonna happen we capped the night off with moving some furniture i uh, went to storage and picked up a cabinet brought it home moved my desk around set up my desktop so i can start doing data recovery it's been a long day hope y'all enjoyed it and uh, stay tuned for the next video please be sure to like and subscribe below